This video is going to explain the Kent demand curve that we'll see in an oligopoly. Generally for a business, this would be their demand curve, a downward sloping demand curve that shows that as the price falls, then the quantity demanded increases. To understand the oligopoly demand curve, we need to first look at the idea of elasticity. I'm going to look at it very quickly here, but if you're not sure about this, there is a video on this channel called Price Elasticity of Demand, and it would explain uh, this concept. Basically, we're looking here at two different demand curves. One is a very steep one, one's a very flat one. The very steep one we call an inelastic demand curve, and the flat one is called an elastic demand curve. And what is happening is if the price is equal to P1, then we have here the, the quantity Q1 and quantity Q1 for these two separate demand curves. Now we're going to make the price fall to P2. On the inelastic demand curve, this is going to have a very small effect. The reduction in price from P1 to P2 hasn't led to a big increase in quantity. Okay, That's what we mean by inelastic. It doesn't stretch a lot. There's not much that happens when the price falls. For the, the other demand curve, the elastic demand curve, we've got a big increase in the quantity with that same change in price. So we have an inelastic demand curve that's very steep and an elastic demand curve that is very flat. And again, to see that in more detail, watch the video called Price Elasticity of Demand. Now we're going to look at the oligopoly demand curve, which is a kinked demand curve. And we'll show that and explain why that is. First of all, an oligopoly is just a market uh, situation where there are only a few large firms operating. It's more competitive than a monopoly situation, but still not a highly competitive situation because there are only a small number of competitors for, uh, in this particular industry and for this firm. And we'll start by saying that in this uh, company, they are, have a price there equal to P1, and the quantity which they are selling at this price is equal to Q1. Now, normally that would mean that we have a demand curve that looks like this, and we found an intersection on that demand curve. But for an oligopoly, it looks a little bit different. In the situation of an oligopoly, if the company was to increase the price which they charged, there would be a big decrease in the amount of products that they sold. That would be because there are competitors who are selling the same product who are still charging this price P1. So decreasing the price, increasing the price has a large effect on the amount of products which are purchased. And we saw from this diagram that when a price change leads to a large change in quantity demanded, then that is this flatter, in, uh, flatter elastic demand curve on the right. So at prices above P1, we have an elastic demand curve like this. So if the price did increase from P1, if we increase that price a little bit, there'd be a large decrease in the quantity demanded for that company. And again, that's because there are similar companies, a very small number of them, but a similar company selling that product. So the customers uh, for this firm will just go to the competitor. So in an oligopoly situation, we'll generally expect that if one business was to increase their price, then the other businesses would keep their price stable, they'd keep their price at P1, so they would attract customers away uh, from the company which decided to increase its price. If, however, this company was to decrease its price, the competitors would be really concerned that their customers would come to this company. So therefore, if there was a, uh, a decrease in the price by this company, the other companies would react by also decreasing their price level. So therefore, for this company, by decreasing their price level, it won't change the quantity demanded very much. If the other companies were still charging P1, 
but this company reduced its price to P2, they would get a lot of extra customers. But in an oligopoly situation, any uh, decrease in price tends to be matched by competitors who don't want to lose uh, those customers. As a result, what we have at prices below P1 is a very inelastic demand curve. Meaning that, that if price was to fall, the other competitors uh, would also decrease their price and the change in quantity demanded would be very small. That would mean that this large area here would be lost in revenue if the business were to decrease their price and the gain that they would get would be this very, very small box here. So the impact of decreasing their price would be negative on the company. By increasing their price, they would gain this extra revenue here, but they would lose all of this revenue here. Uh, if you're not sure about how revenue works, you should watch the, uh, the video on this channel about equilibrium and revenue. So either way, by moving from this point, from P1, Q1, there will be a negative effect on the company of uh, changing their price level. If they increase their price level, they're going to lose a lot of sales to, uh, to competitors. If they decrease their price, they're going to get less revenue from each product that they sell, and they're not going to gain a lot of extra customers because the competition will also decrease their price. And that results in this, uh, this kinked demand curve that is elastic at the higher price levels and very inelastic at the lower price levels. So that's why we say an oligopoly has a kinked demand curve and that's what it looks like.